I was wrong. SpaceX Starlink DTC did it. What did it do? Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Today is going to be a SpaceX Starlink day. We're gonna be talking about DTC or direct to sell service. And this has been really big in the news and I wanna cover it and cover it well. Well, the last video that I did, well, it was a little bit off. There was something that came out literally the next day that I wanna to bring to your attention because it changes everything. It is really that big. So that's what this video is going to be about. In the last video, I was telling you how SpaceX Starlink DTC service gives you the ability to do MMS, SMS, maybe send small files like pictures. And yes, you can do that. Well, it gets deeper than that. And it gets into video. This is just absolutely unbelievable to me because I thought that this was gonna happen maybe first quarter of next year, 2026. I even said that in the video, I was wrong. It is here now. As of October 1st, you now can use some amazing satellite ready applications. Also in this video, I'm gonna get into some of the myths, let's say, around that Spectrum deal that just went through with Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink, how they bought Spectrum from Echostar. What does that mean? Does that mean deeper penetration? Does that mean that they're turning into the fourth global network, let's say, or carrier, wireless carrier? I'm gonna get into some of that today also because there's some really, really good information that a lot of people are not talking about, and hopefully I am. <laughs> so I read a couple articles, I put them all together with you. I'm gonna go through these articles first and then I'll give you my commentary and of course my tidbits at the end of high quality information that you're not gonna get elsewhere, as I always say. And I wanna hear from you. Once again, my commentary is okay, you see this talking head, but more importantly is the community. And the community is you and everyone else. So down below in the comment area, please add your thoughts. What do you think? Is DTC or direct to sell something that you're interested in? If you don't know what direct to sell is, that's basically using your phone, an unmodified phone, with a satellite basically turning into a sat phone where you can now text, make phone calls, and as of today, do video. Even more crazy. Also, if you wanna give back to the channel, there's a little thanks button down here. You can click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you have not subscribed as of yet, consider doing so. If you have, thank you. Click this little notification button here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you enjoy the content, get anything out of it at all, please throw it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. It's fine. For some reason, YouTube likes both, whatever that is. <laughs> if you don't have any time or maybe the inclination to put a comment down there, or maybe you're a little bit shy, please put an emoji. At least I know that you watched the video. That is very, very helpful. And finally, when you're done watching this video, not now, I'm gonna put a link right here to about 560 plus videos specifically on SpaceX Starlink. So if you're here for that topic, you're gonna find a ton of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course the why behind all of it because this channel has always been about the why. So let's jump right into this article. It starts out, Starlink plus T-Mobile, satellite apps just leveled up. T-Mobile's Starlink-powered DTC or direct-to-sell service just made a leap forward that's impossible to ignore. Until now, satellite texting was the story. Today, it's all about apps, the ones you actually use when you're off the grid. This is very important. WhatsApp, Google Maps, and more. The update brings Google Maps, All Trails, AccuWeather, CalTopo, as well as OnX, and even WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a big one into the satellite's reach. Now, this is what makes it just something special. Once again, these are some really great apps. Obviously, you got your Google Maps, your All Trails, if you are out there on the go, off grid, so to speak. But WhatsApp is a peer-to-peer, -peer, a secure connection, an application that allows you to text people back and forth. Also, you can call people, and finally, you can do video calls. Most people are using it for video right now, and what's nice about it is you can use it from out of the country. So when we were in Europe not that long ago, we would call back into the States using what? WhatsApp. 
Anyways, it continues. Imagine hiking a backcountry trail and still being able to drop a live location pin or start a WhatsApp video call. Absolutely amazing. For travelers, explorers, and even emergency responders, this is no longer just a gimmick. It's a lifeline. Why WhatsApp video matters. WhatsApp isn't just about text, it's how millions of people make video calls every day. A typical WhatsApp video call only needs about 0.3 to 0.5 megabits per second to run smoothly, and SpaceX Starlink's DTC or direct to cell service can already provide around 1 to 4 megabits per second per connected phone. That's more than enough for a clear video and voice call. Latency, on the other hand, is a bit higher than SpaceX Starlink's broadband, around 80 to 150 milliseconds instead of under 20. But that's still totally fine for a real conversation. You might notice a slight pause, but it won't break the flow of a call. What works today? Here's what's live right now. Your existing smartphone can connect directly to SpaceX Starlink satellites. No bulky dishes, no extra gear. If you're outside with a clear view of the sky, you can already use satellite-enabled apps for messaging, maps, and WhatsApp calls. That's a huge step from old text-only in emergency era. That's absolutely the case. But when they say outside with clear view of the sky, it's not really necessarily the case. And the reason being is I have actually used DTC sitting here, as I've told you guys, if you've been watching the channel for a while, I've done that during Hurricane, I think it was Helene at the time. And we were here sitting here live and I text my wife using DTC in this building. And this is like poured eight inch concrete, shingle roof and a window far that direction and we were still able to do it. Actually, what's even more crazy is having two bars with DTC when I was getting one bar with the cell tower that's up the road a piece. That is nuts. And we were getting that once again from a satellite overhead coming through either a wall or through the shingled roof or through the window. So this is a big thing. So it does work inside buildings, but that is a big question a lot of people have. How deep into the building and what are they going to do? How are they going to be able to turn into the fourth carrier out there if they can't get inside of a building? How will they do this? And I'm going to get into that a little bit. So before I do, what's coming next? The next leap is tied to hardware and spectrum. Elon Musk's team is rolling out a new Samsung-built baseband chip that will unlock SpaceX Starlink's recently acquired license spectrum from EchoStar. Once enabled, this spectrum will allow SpaceX Starlink signal to penetrate deeper indoors, making calls possible inside homes and buildings, deliver more reliable voice quality, moving satellite service closer to a true cellular replacement, expand capacity per beam, meaning high quality videos and voice for more users at the same time. In other words, today you get outdoor connectivity almost anywhere. Soon you will get cellular quality experience even indoors powered by SpaceX Starlink satellites. So this is true and false at the same time. And the reason being, and this happens all the time, a lot of these articles, I go through them and I'll leave some of these tidbits in there where they just simply get it wrong and then I share it with you so that I can correct it. Because I think it's important because a lot of people will read stuff from mainstream media and they'll just take it for face value and just think that it's correct. Well, it's not correct. So here, when they say that the new license spectrum from EchoStar is going to somehow allow SpaceX Starlink's DTC service to, quote, penetrate deeper indoors, making calls possible inside homes and buildings, that is absolutely fictitious. Absolutely not the case. And the reason being is that the current spectrum that they're using from T-Mobile is PCS, which is at 1900 megahertz or 1.9 gigahertz. Well, the Echo Star, their frequency is about 1915 to about 2000. All right, so it's actually slightly higher frequency. Remember, higher frequency does not penetrate as well as lower frequency. Keep that in mind. Higher frequency does not penetrate as well as lower frequency. 
It does have more capacity, but it doesn't penetrate as well. Anyway, so this whole point that they're making that all of a sudden this is going to miraculously make this just a better service that's going to penetrate through buildings and whatnot is false. 100% false. This AWS 4 and this H block is what they call it that they bought is not going to do that. Now, what is it going to do? And that's the million dollar question. What this spectrum will do is allow SpaceX Starlink to have control over the spectrum. What do I mean by that? That means that if SpaceX Starlink wants to offer DTC in the US, they currently will use T-Mobile, right? And they will piggyback off their 1900 megahertz or 1.9 gigahertz system, their PCS system. Fine. But now they own their own. What does that mean? So if they want to offer service in Bangladesh somewhere, right, and the country allows them to offer the service, they don't need to have a partner in Bangladesh. They don't need to partner with another provider to piggyback off their spectrum because they have their own. What that means is from 1915 to 2000 megahertz is SpaceX Starlink Spectrum, and they will be able to use it globally as long as they are, quote, allowed by the country. You follow that? You understand how big that is? That is massive. They don't need anybody anymore. This is what I've been talking about for a long time, and it's finally here. They just simply do not need anyone. They're going to be able to do this all by themselves. Now, the question about getting it into the home or getting it into the office, and that was another major thing that a lot of people talked about. They're like, well, how is this going to work? I'm not going to go outside to go make a call. I need to make a call here inside the studio. Well, as of right now, I can do it because it works, all right? But if I was deep inside of a hospital somewhere behind a ton of concrete, how is it going to work? So... A couple of things that they're doing. Not only are they building this chipset, all right, this Samsung chipset, which is going to allow the phones to use the frequencies, that 1915 to 2000, which, remember, does nothing besides allow SpaceX to provide you with the service no matter where you are on the globe. That is one thing. But the other thing is, is the version three satellites. Those version three satellites that we're going to see up there, the new DTC version threes, they're going to have advanced beam forming. They're going to be able to get like a tighter signal, right? More concentration, more watts, let's call it watts. <laughs> okay, more power, more power, Scotty, to you. So it's not going to cover as much, but it's going to be tighter and more powerful. So with that advanced beam forming and the new satellites with the more watts, let's call it, all right, tighter beams, tighter and lower. Remember, they're going to be orbiting lower. They're not at 550. They're going to be at 330, 320, closer to the Earth, all right? That's what's going to allow for that penetration. The other thing, and I've talked about this in the past, what they can do is repeaters. Very, very simple. That's all you have. Now, they've been doing this forever, all right? And if you are in a location that has really crap cell service, what do you do? You get a little repeater, you stick it outside. Now it repeats the signal inside and now all of a sudden you have good cell coverage, okay? The same thing could hold true here. They could do a repeater and now all of a sudden you have cell locally to you deep, let's say inside of a building. No problem at all, repeating the signal. Maybe what will happen in the future is each one of the SpaceX Starlink dishes might be a repeater also. Think about that. I never thought about that until just now. But think about that. Now you have millions of these dishes that are repeating the signal, and now you have better coverage when you're closer to one. That's a possibility. I don't know. So there's a lot of things that are going on here that is really going to make this better. You could have a hybrid approach, but the best thing that Elon Musk and SpaceX Starlink could do is like I was telling you before, is that the higher the frequency, yes, you have, let's say, more data going through it, lower frequency can penetrate things a lot easier, okay? High frequency, tighter, more data, but low frequency penetrates. That's why 
FM was always hard for you to get. Let's say in your home and you have to have like rabbit ears or some way to get your FM channels. Whereas AM comes in in the middle of a basement somewhere without a problem. Why? Because the AM is in a frequency like this in comparison to that. Follow that? So the best thing that Elon Musk can do as of today is buy some low frequency spectrum. Maybe about 600 to 800 megahertz. If he can do that, now all of a sudden he can penetrate through buildings with no problem. Now, are you going to do video calls on that six to 800 megahertz? You probably can, but you're not going to get a lot of bandwidth, okay? You're not going to have a lot of data available to you, but you could probably make an acceptable voice call, a VoIP call, voice over IP without a problem. So as you can see, sometimes the articles are off a little bit and I try to correct them for you so you know exactly what's going on, right? None of the hype because that's what's going on currently. There's a lot of channels talking about this stuff and they really don't know what the hell they're talking about. And what ends up happening is they just follow the hype and they just regurgitate what they're reading, but they really don't do the math, so to speak, and understand what is going on. Because if you just logically think about it, if the spectrum that's currently being used by T-Mobile is 1900 and they just bought 1915 through 2000, which is a higher frequency, how is it gonna penetrate better? How is it going to penetrate deeper? Simple math, physics, it won't. It's absolutely not possible. Anyways, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please throw it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Don't forget to check out my website over at jchristina.com. Maybe check out some of my merch, jchristina.com forward slash shop. If there's something there that you like, please pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected hopefully through SpaceX Starlink, maybe in DTC, direct to sell. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.